Welcome everyone to this lecture on TensorFlow basic syntax. Here we're going to learn the very basics of TensorFlow. We'll start off by actually creating tensors, just constant tensors, and then we'll go into computations and then running a session in TensorFlow. Let's open up a Jupyter Notebook and get started. All right, first thing we're going to do is import TensorFlow. We're already pretty far into the course, but now is the very first time we actually get to use TensorFlow. And just to make sure you're using the same version I am in the environment file, go ahead and run this line right here, print tf dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore, and it should have some variation of 1.3. So it doesn't matter if it says 0, .0 here at the end, but make sure you're using TensorFlow 1.3. Uh, future versions like 1.4 and 1.5, they may have very small slight syntax changes. So since we are just learning TensorFlow and I don't want you to get hung up on small syntax, changes, go ahead and make sure you're using 1.3. Then once you fully understand TensorFlow, you can easily go on to a more updated version in case you're watching this in the future. Let's start off by actually creating a tensor. So the word tensor, it's basically just a fancy word for an n-dimensional array. We'll start off by creating the most basic tensors possible, and that is a constant. So I'm going to create a variable called hello, and we'll say tf constant, and I'm going to pass in a string here. We'll say hello, and then I'm going to actually leave a space at the end. And then I'm going to create another constant here. We'll call it world. It's also going to be tf.constant, and this will be, as you may have guessed, the string world. So if I take a look at what type of object this is, it is not a string object. It is a TensorFlow Python framework ops, and then we have tensor. So this by itself, this variable right here, is a tensor object. So as you may have guessed, if I try to print the variable hello, I am not going to get a string. Instead, it's going to say, hey, this is a tensor, it's a constant, blah, blah, blah. The data type inside of this tensor is a string. It's not actually going to print out the word hello. In order to actually get hello to print, what we need to do is run this sort of operation inside of a session, just like we did in our previous manual neural network. So the way we actually create a TensorFlow session is with the following command. We say with tf dot session, open and close parentheses, as SESS, -S, colon, and then you can have a block of code here indented, and everything here inside of this is just going to be TensorFlow operations that you run. And the reason we use this keyword with is because that makes sure that we don't have to actually close the session. So this kind of automatically opens it, runs the block of code, and then closes the session. Let's go ahead and do a simple run command. So we'll say SESS dot run, and then I can create an operation here. So let's do a concatenation operation, basically hello plus world. So we're going to run that, and since I actually didn't save it as a result, let's run this again, but assign it to result. And then outside of the session, I can then print the result, and it says hello world. And if you're wondering what this B represents right in front of the string, it just represents in Python 3 that this is a bytes literal. Okay, and for our purposes, we don't really need to concern ourselves too much with this B. Continuing on, let's go ahead and explore the more basics of TensorFlow. Let's perform another computation. Let's do something like addition. So I'm going to say A is equal to TF constant, and I'm going to put a number here like 10. We're going to create another constant, tf constant. Let's put 20. And then again, if I check the type of a, it again is just a tensor. And if we do something like a plus b, the result right now it says, hey, this is tf.tensor, add shape, data type, integer 32. If I run this again, a plus b, notice here that it's saying it's add underscore 3 which means TensorFlow is actually somehow in the background keeping track of this. So it's actually numbering uh, add two, add three. If I were to copy this and run it again, it kind of keeps track of how many times you're asking for this. Now, keep in mind, it hasn't actually executed these tasks because we didn't run them inside of a session. So let's actually run them inside of a session. We'll say with tf.session as SESS, we'll say result is equal to session run, and then we can actually input the operation here, a plus b, and then if I check out my results, it's 30, 10 plus 20 is 30. Okay, so those are very basic computations. So let's go ahead and show you some more operations, and these operations that I'm gonna cover, um, they're really more in line with kind of 
the TensorFlow version of NumPy operations. Remember with NumPy we were creating matrices like zeros, ones, random normal distributions, random uniform distributions. So I'm going to create just a bunch of operations here that we can check out. I'm going to create a constant again. So we have a constant operation that's just for a constant number. Sometimes you need to have a matrix filled out. So you say, we'll say fill mat, and then I'm going to say tf.fill. And if you do shift enter here, it says, hey, this is going to create a tensor. Remember, that's just a fancy word for an n-dimensional array filled with a scalar value. And then we're going to provide it with what it wants. It wants the dimensions and the value it filled with. So we'll say, hey, give me a four by four filled with the value 10. So that's our filled matrix. Then we can say something like my zeros and then we have TF zeros. That's another kind of quick operation TensorFlow gives you. And again, just creates a tensor with all elements set to zero. So let's give it the shape. We'll again ask for a four by four. We're gonna do the same thing for ones, as you may have guessed, TF ones. And let's go ahead, keep it four by four. And now let's show you just a few random distributions that you can do. So there's a random normal distribution. We'll call it my rand n. Keep in mind everything on the left-hand side of that equal sign is just a variable name. And then we're gonna say TF, random and as we begin to type random you can see there's a ton of options here we'll explore the options as we need them throughout the course but random normal that's kind of a more common one so it just outputs random values from a normal distribution and you can actually provide the mean and standard deviation as well as the shape so let's go ahead and do that we'll just say we've been doing 4x4 for everything so let's continue with that trend and we'll actually just keep the defaults but in case you wanted to specify you could say like mean is equal to zero uh, standard deviation, I, I forget what the default was, I think it was 1.0. You can obviously change that as you see fit. And then a uniform distribution is also a very common distribution to be using. So we'll say random, and let's go with random uniform. And let's, let's do the same thing here, four by four. And for a random uniform, instead of having a mean or standard deviation, it wants a minimum value and maximum value, where you basically draw from that distribution from zero to the max value, or you know, if you want a negative minimum value, that's okay too. And it draws them in a uniform manner. So we'll say min value is zero, and we'll say max value is one. Okay, so we have a bunch of operations here. None of these have really been executed yet. So if you just call for one of them, like my zeros, you don't see anything. It just says, hey, this is a TensorFlow. It's kind of just waiting for you to execute it or run it in a session. So I'm gonna create a list here called my ops which is going to be full of these operations. So we'll say uh, whatever my const was, and let's say fill mat, just using tab to autocomplete this quickly. My zeros, my ones, my rand n, and then my rand u. Okay, so now I have a list of all of these. So let's go ahead and run these inside of a session. So usually we're always going to be using this with TF session. That's pretty much how you always see it in the documentation but I do want to introduce you to something called an interactive session. It's pretty useful for notebook settings like this Jupyter notebook. Uh, it doesn't really have much use outside of a notebook setting, depending on how you actually are coding TensorFlow and whatever IDE you're using. But basically, if you use an interactive session, it allows you to constantly call it throughout multiple cells. Let me show you how to do that. Uh, we really won't be using it throughout the course, but in case you're interested in it, now's a good time to introduce it to you. So you just say SESS is equal to an interactive session. And then basically the rest of these cells are going to uh, kind of pretend that they're already being called with this with TF session. Again, this interactive session really only useful for a notebook setting. So I'm going to say for operation in that list, my ops, I'm going to say session run, and then we'll say uh, op. And let's actually print this out so we can see the results. Run that, and here we can see all the results. Let's add a new line in between them. So new line in between each result, and here we have it. So I can see that constant, I can see that filled matrix, remember it was a four by four of tens, my zeros matrix, my ones matrix, and then my two random matrices. So again, the reason I was able to do this outside of the actual session was because I had this interactive session. It's really useful for a Jupyter Notebook environment, but to kind of stick with the actual documentation and all the other examples you see online, we'll pretty much always be using this with TF session, unless it's a really quick job that I wanna run between multiple cells. Okay, so we just have 
says run op. Something to note is that a lot of these operations, they have an eval method on them. So we may see that in the future where instead of saying session.run and then you pass in the operation, usually if you put in op and then start calling eval, there's an evaluation method which is essentially telling it, hey, evaluate this operation, and you get the exact same results when you run that. Okay, so again, typically we'll be saying session.run instead of calling this eval, but kind of for something quick and dirty, we may do an interactive session, just do .eval. All right, continuing on, the last thing I want to talk about is matrix multiplication. We use matrix multiplication a lot with uh, neural networks, especially our basic neural networks. So let's create a matrix real quick. We'll have it be a constant. And we're going to feed this in as a kind of nested list. So we'll say one by two here, comma, and then let's go ahead and say three, four. So this is actually a two by two matrix, but it has one, two on the top row, three, four on the bottom row, just a nested list here. And then if I say A, I can call get shape off of this. And it says that the shape of this tensor is two by two, which makes sense. That's what we provided there. Let's go ahead and give one more constant. We'll say, this constant is going to be, let's have it be a two by one. So we'll have the first number be 10, second number be 100. And this is where you may have to kind of refresh on linear algebra after we do this multiplication. But essentially we get the shape. This one's a two by one. So I'm going to say my result is equal to tf.matmol. Hopefully that looks a little familiar to you based off our basic neural network when we implemented it. So I have my result here, and then I can say sys.run result, and it gives me back the actual array. So it multiplied this two by two array by this two by one, and as a result, you get back a two by one. Now, keep in mind, usually you'd have to run this within a session. It's only because I called this interactive session that I'm able to run it between multiple cells. Pretty useful for a Jupyter notebook, not super useful anywhere else. Okay, and one last reminder is I could have just said, eval to see the results as well. That's the very basics of TensorFlow syntax. I really hope that kind of felt pretty familiar, especially after our manual neural network. And you can see here, TensorFlow framework doing a lot of the heavy lifting behind the scenes for you. Main things you should have gotten out of this lecture is that you can create basic constants, operations, and then run them within a session. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you at the next lecture.